you know, the Chainsaw movies and, uh, you know, Hooper's other stuff, amazing stories. Uh, I'm just really, uh, I've always been a big fan of stuff. I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about him, your experience working with him, and any uh, anecdotes about the story. And then we'll turn it over to you guys for uh, questions of your own. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, please get a round of applause for both of you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming up. And uh, thanks for having me. And this, uh, it's just awesome to watch this print. I think the uh, first time I saw Texas Chainsaw 2 on the big screen was, um, I'm not sure, maybe it was, uh, it was either Times Square or it was a... Uh, drive-in in Southern California. I don't know why I was in both coasts, but, uh, um, and I just remember uh, in, the, in, the, in the Times Square screening, I was sitting with a friend, we saw it, the credits rolled, the lights came up, and my buddy was very proud of me for being in the movie, so he, uh, he said, hey, hey everybody, there's Chop Top, you know? And I remember there was a guy sitting ahead of, in, in front of us in a black leather jacket, and he turned and he went, hey man, I really like your work. And he held his hand out and it was a, it was a hook. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I guess that was kind of a taste of what was to come in my life, but uh, I appreciate it. You know, my dad always told me, it doesn't matter what they extend, just, you know, grab it and shake it hard with so, uh, <laughs> lesson. Um, you know, about Jim C. Now, um, it, was, it was funny, when I first saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one, I think it was probably 1975, I was in Boston, I was in the combat zone, and uh, it was on a double bill, the tail end of a double bill with uh, Enter the Dragon. And uh, it was afternoon, Sunday, you know, it was a kind of a Times Square of Boston, so it was a very sparse and funky crowd. Uh, everybody was very fired up. I'd never seen a Bruce Lee movie, so everybody was fired up about that. I love Bruce Lee, uh, by the way. and. Um, Anyway, so then uh, the chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw came on, and really from the opening, you know, the, the weird, the tortured violin strings and the, you know, the strobes of the dead melted body, I mean, it just, it just cap, you know, cap, it captured us all. And I, I kept looking for a zipper or, a, you know, something to kind of pull out of that movie, and I, I never did find it. And uh, then, then I tried to, uh, you know, I thought maybe if I watch it a bunch of times, and this is kind of kind of before VHS, I think. Uh, so I had to, you know, try to find places that were showing the original. And um, you know what? Uh, I probably ended up seeing it, you know, and then VHS as well, probably a good dozen times. And it just, it never got easier to watch for me. It just, it still had this, uh, had me in its thrall. And, um, and it wasn't until uh, I was working on a ranch one summer in Wyoming, and, um, I was working with a nutty kid who would uh, drink a lot of um, mellow yellow. He had a bunch of Snickers bars. He would eat like sugary breakfast foods. I mean, he was like a sugar nut. And uh, one day when he, would, when he would do manual labor on this ranch, he would go into what I called sugar deliriums. And he would just start speaking in tongues and singing radio jingles. And just, he was a crazy idiot. And, uh, and I would kind of turn a deaf ear to him because I think his parents paid the ranch to, you know, have him out for the summer. And one day he was, uh, you know, just buzzing along going, I am Captain Crunch, you know, just doing all this crazy shit. And then all of a sudden he went, Texas Chainsaw Manicure. And then he just kept, you know, singing and shopping, whatever he was doing. And um, I heard that and I was like, holy shit. And I went back to the bunkhouse, of course, it's a ranch. And, uh, you know, and I penned a little five-minute scenario about a woman who goes to a beauty parlor, gets her hair done, wants to get a manicure, and out from the back of the shop comes Leatherface with a chainsaw, and he starts manicuring her <coughs> hands. She screams, passes out, uh, and when she comes to, not only does she still have her hands, but she has a fabulous manicure. <laughs> and uh, so I ended up, uh, you know, going back to New York and gathering some friends and we shot the Texas Chainsaw Manicure. I think it was probably back in maybe 1984. And, um, you know, that was fun. And in the manicure, you know, I wrote it, produced it, and I also, uh, you know, did a cameo as, uh, you know, uh, the hitchhiker played by the great Ed Neal in the original uh, Chainsaw. And um, fast forward, I was out on a, a job, I was out in LA, I had a friend from school who was a screenwriter. I showed him this five minute video, 
And it turned out he was working across the hall at the time from Toby Hooper. I think Toby was working on Poltergeist at the time. And my buddy wrote Roger Rabbit and a bunch of different cool movies. And uh, he was doing something else, I guess, at Paramount or wherever it was. Anyway, he told me when he saw the manicure that he would, if I wanted to leave him a copy, he would walk it into Toby Hooper. And I said, you know, sure, might as well. I mean, I was already in the hole and nobody wanted, you know, nobody wanted to put it on the air or do anything with it. So I said, sure, absolutely. Well, he did. And because of that, you know, my little 20 second cameo in the Chainsaw Manicure, um, I, I landed the job as Chop Top. Um, I never, you know, I, I didn't hear, I called Toby and uh, talked to him a little bit. He said, yeah, I love the manicure man. Who was, uh, who, who was the guy that played the hitchhiker? And I said, well, that was me. And he said, well, uh, shit, if I ever do a sequel, I'll keep you in mind. And uh, that was the last I heard of him, uh, from him. And two years later, I got a call one night from the screenwriter Kit Carson out of nowhere saying, is this Bill Mosley? Uh, yeah. And uh, he said, uh, well, I, you know, I'm Kit Carson. I've written, you know, the sequel to the Texas Chainsaw Manic uh, Massacre, excuse me. And, uh, and I'd love to send you a copy of the script. And I said, sure, great, okay. You know, I think maybe I even said, who is this really? But you know, somehow I got the address, you know, he sent me the script. I read it, he told me to look at the part of Chop Top, you know, and I was thinking it was gonna be a little part. And then all of a sudden it's like, holy shit. And, um, and then uh, I got a call from Canon Films legal department wanting to know, you know, if I wanted to negotiate the contract or if I had an agent, I didn't have an agent, I was a writer. Um, and I said, uh, well, let me get back to you. So, um, you know, I got an agent and they called and, you know, and I, I kept thinking, you know, what's going on here? I, I kept thinking that maybe I'd get a free trip to LA out of it, um, you know, and I'd audition, I wouldn't get the part because a real actor would get the part and all that. but. Um, uh, they called up and said, um, you've got the job and just, uh, you know, get down to Austin, Texas in you know, a couple of weeks. And, um, and they said, you know, you're going to have to, you know, my, this is my agent telling you this. And she said, uh, you're going to have to shave your head. And I said, yeah, it's fine. She said, well, I didn't tell them that. I said that you wouldn't be able to work and therefore uh, they're going to pay you $5,000 to shave your head. And I was like <laughs> laughing because as a writer, I was making like 250 a week and, you know, <laughs> shave my head, I mean, I would have done it for free, but don't tell Canon Films that. Um, anyway, when I first got down to uh, Austin, Texas, um, you know, I was, you know, my, they'd shave my head, uh, you know, uh, and um, so I was already kind of alienated, and uh, I, I would remember walking into the motel or into the back, you know, heading to my little room at this motor inn where they put us up, and seeing Jim Seedow. See, I, I remember the question. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was uh, just seeing Jim Seedow was so uh, amazing. Um, I just remember going, it's the cook! I just said that out loud. He was like, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and he, uh, you know, it was so amazing. And in that moment, I think, really, I lost my fear of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You know, that I had really, you know, tried everything to kind of get it out of my head. I was really just uh, terrified by it, really. I mean, but, you know, disturbed, I would say. And, uh, you know, and seeing Jim Seedow's smiling, crazy face uh, made me feel like I was a member of the family. And, you know, it was really a case of if you can't lick them, join them. And I found as soon as I became a part of the Chainsaw family, I felt great. Okay, well, that's that long question. And, I, and I'll tell you about Jim Seedow, too. I, I will answer your question, but also, you know, then years later, I, I play him in, uh, you know, the Texas Chainsaw 3D. So that's kind of a weird full circle. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you.